What's up, Tech Heart? Let's have a little video today continuing on in the M4 Mac Mini series. The company, Minispiru, sent over a couple hubs, and we're going to check them out today. Uh, they sent over one of their vertical hubs, and then one of their ones that sits underneath the Mac Mini, with a cutout for that power button. They also sent over two of their USB-C cables that are pretty nice. And we're going to dig on into these and check them out today. Let's get the camera down low. We'll open the boxes. We'll have a look. And then afterwards, I'm going to take you over to the Mac Mini. And I'm going to show you how you can take some of your applications and move the data onto an external hard drive that both of these hubs support. And literally run games, uh, different applications, and save that space on your Mac Mini's hard drive. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. Let's check out what Minispiru sent on over. Now, both of these Minisporu hubs support internal NVMe drives, and I believe they're at USB 3, 10 gigabits a second. The vertical one also has two ports that are 10 gigabits per second, but the smaller one does not have that. They both look really good. The vertical one's cool if you want your Mac Mini to stand up. The one with the notch is cool because it's in that same Mac Mini footprint. Let me rip both of these out of the box, and I'll catch it in one side. Here we have both of the docks. As you can see, the one that's missing a notch is smaller, it's thinner. On the front, it has SD and TF card slots, and two USB-A slots for your keyboard and your mouse. Those are not going to be 10 gigabits or anything like that. On the rear, we have a USB to host that will connect to our Mac Mini. You have HDMI. So you can hook up an external monitor, 3.5 inch headphone jack, and another USB-A. One really cool part though, is it has that NVMe enclosure, so you can install a drive in there. The vertical dock has a longer USB-C cable. Well, I didn't point that out. Uh, the smaller one has this little guy that plugs in and plugs right into your Mac Mini. It has a nice rubber base for your Mac Mini to sit in. And then Bob's your uncle, baby. This also has a little cell phone holder where you could slap a cell phone when you're not using it. So that's the vertical dock, and it also has that same NVMe slot to install an SSD. Both docks come with a screwdriver and extra screws. The smaller of the two, you have to install the little metal thing that the screw screws down into, uh, into the NVMe enclosure, and it was a little bit tricky, but you kind of just Get it in there and it slides up. Either one of the docks will take any size NVMe, whether it's a full length or that shorter one. We can really quickly take a look at the two NVMe bays. On the vertical dock, it has this little rubber stopper, and that's what you would insert to hold your NVMe drive down. On the other hub, you'll see the little bolts in there, and that's free. I don't know if I can show it on camera, but you have to slide it in that little hole, or whichever hole you're going to be using, depending on how large your NVMe is. I'm going to get an NVMe installed here, and we'll jump right on over to the computer. Let's go! One of the big things I want to show everybody how to do is how we can copy applications off of our internal drive and onto one of these hubs. First things first, let's check out some speed tests. I'll open up a window here. This is our internal drive. It gets writes of 1673 and reads of 2683. I'm going to go down here to the Mini Pro. That's the flat hub with a notch cutout. And it's writing at 976.4 and reading at 815. If we go to the vertical hub, same, 979 and 815. Now, that's substantially slower than our internal drives. But can we play games on the external? Let's check it out. I'll open up that external disk and you can see I already have several applications copied onto it. Let me open up another finder window. Here we're going to go to our applications. And to demonstrate copying a game off, let's use Asphalt 8. So one way I can do that is I can just grab the asphalt8.app and drag it onto our external drive. It copies over pretty quick. Just like that, it's on our external hard disk. And now that Asphalt 8 is copied over to our external drive, we can go down here to Applications and right-click it. This is the one on the internal drive. Move to Trash. 
Now it's off of our internal drive and onto our external drive. But you'll notice we have no icon. To remedy that, you can right click the Asphalt 8 app on your external drive, click Make Alias, then you can drag that alias down to your Applications folder on your internal drive. You can also right click it and uh, go to Rename, and that's just to remove this alias off the end of it. And now up here on the external drive, you can delete the alias. Now Asphalt 8 lives on our external drive that's installed in our Minisapuro hub, but we still have an alias. Is the hub fast enough to run games? Well, let's find out. Bob's your uncle. It's fairly responsive. On some games, I've seen a slowdown here or there, but for the most part, it's as good as gold. I'm going to show you one other way you can do that. So I'm going to remove this alias from our internal drive. I'm going to copy Asphalt 8 back onto the internal drive. Okay, so that's back on our internal drive. Just to show everybody, I'm going to remove it from the external. Close these down and I'm gonna open up my terminal. Some of you might not want to use your terminal, but I just wanna show you another way. We can see our external drive at volumes slash Samsung 980, and here's what we could do. We could say move slash applications, that's our internal drive, and we can select asphalt8.app, and then we'll move that to our external drive, which is slash volumes and Samsung for me. That'll move the Asphalt 8 off of the internal drive and back onto the external. And then we can make a sim link. We'll use a command ln-s and we're going to use our external drive and that Asphalt8.app and we'll create that sim link on our internal drive in applications. Now if we do an ls all of our slash applications, which is our internal drive, we'll scroll up. And we can see right here, there's a link on our internal drive, but it just points to the external drive where the entire Asphalt 8 game lives. We can see that by typing du-sh on volumes, our external drive, and Asphalt 8. And yeah, it lives right there. So that's just a easier for me way to do that copy process. But either way, you can do it in Mac OS or you can do it in the terminal. I just wanted to show you guys both. Let's take a look at that entire external drive, and I'm just going to grab all these, and I'm going to get info, and a bunch of little windows will pop up, and check this out. Among Us is a gigabyte. Asphalt 8 is four gigabytes. Blender's about a gigabyte, another gigabyte in Code of War. Resident Evil 4, 66 gigabytes on the external disk. That's 66 gigabytes that's not on your internal disk. So you can see just how much space you can save on that precious Mac mini hard drive. I think this is a win, man. Even though this is not Thunderbolt 4, it's fast enough for me and the stuff that I do. What do you guys think? I'll meet you back on the couch so we can wrap this puppy up. Let's do it! All right, so there we go, guys. We had a good look at the Minisecuro vertical stand and the Minisecuro horizontal. Which was your favorite? Um, about the horizontal, I like that it has those two extra USB 10 gigabit ports, one on the side and one on the back. But I like the streamlined look of uh, the notch horizontal one. The notch one is called the Mini 4 Pro, and this one is the Mini 218B Pro. Either way, they're both $99. Um, for me, they're fast enough to run external apps. If you need Thunderbolt 4 speeds, which I think will up to like 3,000 instead of the around about 1,000 you got with uh, these two, then that's something you can look into. But you're going to pay more than double the price. I think for 100 bucks, either one, either one of these would be a good choice. What do you think? Also, if you're in need of USB-C cables, these are high quality. They're nice. I tested one of them, and uh, they're really good if you want all your cables to match on your Mac Mini. So let me know, guys. Will you be ordering one or two? I think the horizontal will be living on my desk, for a little while anyway. Let me know what you think. Tech Heart, out!